So this is part two of the last video. In my last video, I, um, I spoke to you guys about um, how my parents met, uh, the separation, the war that took place and how we was living life with my grandmother. Uh, so this video is a, is a continue uh, from the last, after four years of being separated, we was to be, you know, we was allowed to be reunited with our mum and dad. Um, I remember the day so clearly, you know, I remember at the time I was eight, it was eight years old. And I remember my auntie, um, you know, bathing us for the very last time. And she, you know, she had a, she had a tear, tear and she, you know, she would say, oh, you know, make sure you be good, get, get over, get safe, fly safe. We hope to see you again one day. Uh, this is the last time she was cleaning us and she'll say, this is the last time that I'm gonna bath you guys, um, you know, uh, and stuff like that. Mm, I remember being really confused as a child. I was always a confused child because, you know, not really having anyone to explain anything, if I can be honest, because we were just left to fend for ourselves. And, um, and I, I was thinking, like, I was really confused because I said to my grandmother before, you know, I left, I said, I don't really want to leave. I really want to stay with you because one day if you do become blind, who's going to, you know, uh, take you to go and beg? Because we were very, living in that village, you know, there was a lot of begging going on because everyone was so poor. So that was my excuse for not wanting to leave my nan because I didn't really want to go to be with my parent because I didn't know who my parents were. All I knew was my caretaker, which was my nan. Um, and so it was very alienated at the age of eight to really understand what was going on. I really didn't understand a lot as a child growing up, to be honest with you, because there was not, there was not a lot of teaching going on and there's not a lot of explaining or reasoning going on it was just like fend for yourself kind of thing everyone was busy doing their own thing and we were just left to fend for ourselves so we really didn't understood the the whole idea of life or where we were what we were who we were kind of thing but anyway i um i said goodbye to my grandmother and um and it was the day the day that we was going to meet our parents um, I remember, uh, you know, I cried a lot when I said goodbye to my grandmother and then I became very clingy to my big sister. I started to get very clingy to her um, because I think it's the fear and the anxiety, you know, of not knowing anything else than anyone and I must cling on to the only person that I know kind of thing. Um, and um, yeah, we came over to England. I remember going on the aeroplane for the very first time. Everything was very scary. I was very scared like you know uh, flying on the aeroplane going on the escalator was very scared frightening for me um we had this piece of paper that was written like you know everything was just very scary and um and i would say to my sister like where are we going she'll be she was reply to say like we're gonna go and and, and, and meet our parent for the very first time and anyway Finally, after a long flight, we landed in uh, in England, and um, oh my God, the first time going on es escalators, that was funny. Um, my brothers and I, we would be tumbling and rumbling, falling all over because we was trying to hold on to the to, to the escalator rather than standing still and let it take you we was trying to hold on because we were so scared of this idea of it flowing that would we would hold on so then we'll fall over we'll stumble over and it was just crazy you know it was just crazy and um and i was just so scared but anyway we we we, we finally we we you know it, it was time to meet our our our, our mum and dad and um yeah so i got introduced to my mum and dad and I remember holding on to my sister saying, who is that? And she was like, oh, that's your dad. And I would refuse to call him dad. I would call him uncle for a, a short period of time. I would call him uncle. Mm, so I'd be like, I, I, would, I wouldn't go to him. I just would not go to him. And I remember like meeting my youngest sister for the very first time. I didn't like her 
because of course we've been separated. I didn't really like her, I really didn't like my father. You know, why am I forced to call these people mum and dad when I really, I don't want to. I don't understand what is mum and dad. I didn't get it, I really didn't get it because remember when I was a little girl, there was no explanation and no explaining of anything. Mm, you know, as long as you're fed a meal a day, then that's it. Left to you, do your own thing. Do, do your own thing in this village, do your own thing. You know, there's no one really explained anything. And then being forced to call somebody that's a stranger, dad, you know, like, it's very strange. No one really sat me down and said, you know what, and this and that, and it's okay, and that it's safe, and it's this. No one really did sit me down. And, um, and coming from an oriental background, they don't really express their emotions. They don't really pour their heart out to give you the time of day to explain anything. It's like, just get on with it. Just get on with it, you know, get on with it. As long as you're not dead, it's fine, get on with it. But anyway, um, uh, so that, yeah, so that's my memories. And uh, yeah, life was, again, very tough coming over to England, not knowing how to speak the language, um, seeing homes and houses being very different, not enough, enough greenery, where's the lakes and the, the, the ponds? Uh, why is there so many roads? Why are people speaking weird? Um, and, 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 and all that sort of stuff. So, so yes.